we used to, um, when we first, when I remember first coming, uh, of course the streets weren't paved. I, I, I'm not sure if there was some early form of some blacktop or just compacted gravel, but uh, there were uh, no stop signs. Uh, kids were running around because it was the baby boom, so there was always lots of kids. Uh, once a year later in the summer, uh, the truck would come down, the oil truck, and spray the whole street to try to lower the dust level. And uh, we kids enjoyed it because after, after that, uh, if it rained, you know, there'd be puddles along the sides of the street and you could see the swirls of oil. <laughs> <laughs> the little uh, rainbows, and that was very interesting. You could take a stick and kind of move that around. There were no uh, house numbers, and there was no mail delivery, uh, except uh, when folks came by in the spring, if they were summer people, at, at most of the major corners, there was this little house. Uh, it, it was really a set of two or three shelves with a little roof on top, uh, shingle roof, and you would take your mailbox that you would presumably had stored somewhere in the house, and you'd take it out to the nearest corner spot. It would have your name on it, and in our case, um, it, it, I think it probably had the willows on it because uh, in a fit of bourgeois, <laughs> Uh, um, assumption, my grandfather had named his cottage the Willows, it, if only because there were a lot of willow trees on the property and, and, and defining the edge of the property, actually. And that was kind of fun. The kids, of course, wanted, all they wanted to do was climb those and uh, were also under strict instructions not to climb those because you'd fall down and break your neck and, and so th that was a constant con contest. But, you know, in the afternoon, uh, mom would send you out and say, hey, why don't you go see if the mail's there or not? And you might, if you were very eager, if you thought you were going to get your My Weekly Reader or something, you might go out a couple, three times before the mail actually arrived. I think when they uh, paved the street, it was probably around 1960 or so, I am not you'll know that. Uh, they had to put house numbers on and then door-to-door -door, uh, mail delivery occurred and everything changed. Uh, early on, uh, mail addressed to my dad, uh, Park Stewart, The Willows, Huron, Ohio. It would get to him. And, or at best, Harlan Stewart, Old Homestead, The Willows. Here in Ohio. The plague of summer insects. Nowadays, we have uh, muckleheads or muffleheads. We all know those around in May. And then we have, uh, later on, we have the June bugs with the large wings that uh, now are politically incorrectly formally referred to as Canadian soldiers. Uh, in, in, there was, of course, a time in, say, the 80s or so where they practically disappeared. The lake health was so poor, uh, and now they're back, uh, at least in some numbers. Uh, these are kind of the stories that my dad would tell that I swore he had to be pulling my leg. He said that uh, in his day, uh, they had to shovel up the Canadian soldiers underneath the street lights. They were so thick, they would come and die, and they'd actually sh shovel them out of the way uh, because you didn't want to run over them. <laughs> it was kind of greasy. <laughs> yeah, the, the cottage was always used as a summer home. My dad lived in Detroit in the 30s uh, and would come down. Uh, it would be locked up, it, well, <clears throat> Somewhere uh, in the early 20s, after World War I, uh, my dad helped uh, an electrician to electrify it. Uh, originally, it had been, uh, there was gas light in there. Uh, and I can, I can say a little more about that later. Uh, and then uh, they put in indoor plumbing 
probably around that time too, sometime in the 20s. Pipes are just hung underneath the house. The house sits on uh, brick stilts or brick pillars. Uh, so you would drain the pipes and put um, heavy wooden shutters on all the doors and windows and that was it for the winter. Come spring, you had to take the heavy wooden shutters off and you would put heavy uh, screens, hook those on and sort of tidy things up and then you were ready for the summer. From the age of six and a half or seven, since 1959, uh, my father and my mother and I lived there. I up through high school and then I went off to college and, and off. Uh, my father lived there until he died in 79. And <clears throat> my mother lived there until the last six months of her life. Uh, at the end of uh, 2011. And uh, I couldn't bear to part with the place. And my wife and I discussed long uh, sessions about what we could do with the place. But my desire was really to try to return it uh, as best I could to a summer cottage. And uh, that's kind of what we've done. The, the Im improvements or was mostly just repairs. Any improvements were designed to be something that would make help us be able to open it up and close it up in the spring and the fall. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> the house has a, a 40 foot wide porch looking out on the lake. It's 10 foot deep. And um, that's what, that's what we, we remember. That's where we stay. Uh, when, when trying to describe it to other people, I said, well, we, we own a porch on the lake with a house attached, because that's, that's the important thing. Uh, and so we have friends, relatives, anybody we can con into coming and visit for a day or a week or whatever, come by. And it's very much the way I remember it. As a child, I was put to bed, of course, early. And, it, and you know, around here, there's nothing worse than being put to bed while it's still light. Oh, it's terrible. And if that's not bad enough, listening to kids and people laughing and playing on the beach while you're consigned to bed is a kind of torture that, you know, no one has, has bettered. <laughs> the, so I can remember the, the adults talking adult things or whatever it was they were doing, but they were laughing and smiling, telling jokes, whatever it was. I didn't understand any of it, but I could tell they were having a good time. It was a good time and I wasn't part of it. So now I'm the guy who's sitting on the porch telling jokes, laughing and having a good time, and so that's just fine. <laughs>